Hey y'all, so I'm back. I'm back here with another video. So I haven't done a let's talk about it video in a good minute because well, I'm busy. I got shit to do, but let's get to it. So we're going to touch on a couple things today. Where are we at? I'm over looking over there like my laptop's over there. All right, here we go. Let's start off the first story. So this has been talked about to like nauseating effects at this point this week, but let's talk about the Danny Lee. Is it Danny? Yeah, Danny Lee situation. Now, the only thing I know about Danny Lee is that she likes to tick it I like that song. Uh, uh, uh. But I only like the version with her and Chris Brown. I don't like the version with her by herself. Um, you know, that's the first time I heard of Danny Lee. Then I heard, because I love Fabio Foreign so much, I know that he was on a song with her. Um, Dominican Mommy. And anybody. Which, as soon as I heard that song, don't ask me why in my spirit but as soon as i heard that song i said bruh race and ethnicity it's gonna be an issue i don't know when it's gonna come up but i just knew it i thought people was gonna have a problem with that damn song but i mean she is dominican so there shouldn't be a problem with that but i don't know i just felt in my spirit there was gonna be issues stemming from that not stemming from that but something around her race was gonna come up i already knew it okay then I knew about her. Then the next thing I heard about the girl is the whole situation with the baby and the baby's baby mama and the back and forth and the fuckery and all of that shit. Really don't care. Um, Outside of the take it easy. I don't really care about good sis. Just like that song, good song. Um, So yeah. So apparently my good sis went on, well she ain't my good sis, but apparently she went on her Instagram and she posted this like thriller video or whatever that she made. And this for this song that she was doing called Yellow Bone. Now let's play a part of the song. Because my main problem is that the song is fucking terrible. Let's listen, shall we? Hold on. Let's listen. I don't even know what's saying proud of me in Saint Laurent. Okay, stop. Enough. I don't. That's the song. That's the snippet. It just keeps. Like that. that, that that's all it is. And you can see her and her whatever. Her yellow yellow bone self. Is that, that's what she wants to call herself in there. So, of course, people had a problem off top because, sis, this is the issue. We no longer need any. We don't need any more songs about yellow bones we do not my entire life my entire life yellow bones quote unquote first of all have always been up there i like them long i like them long hair thick red bone open up them in the flaming yellow net that like even though that's red bone and it's yellow bone but you know it's kind of the same thing my whole life i've always been heard about a girl oh, look at that yellow bone look at that yellow bone it's always about the yellow bones always 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 so it's very confusing as to why because she then we said well i don't understand why all you guys are upset i just wanted to make a song for my daddy for my bad what is that she said for my light-skinned baddies girl you don't need no more they that's the thing no light-skinned woman needs another song to uplift her. Y'all are uplifted in every single other way. And somebody made this, and it's a good point. Do you see white people walking around here talking about how excited they are about being white? A lot of them know. Why? Because a lot of them understand. They might act like they don't understand. But a lot of them understand that. Why do I need to go around and do that? It's clear everywhere that being white is great. So I don't need to make a song about that. And then Daniel Lee also came back and said, you know, well, she didn't see it was a big deal because there's plenty and thousands of millions of songs, you know, of people embracing their skin color. So why can't she do it? First of all, that's a lie. Second of all, you know, people were trying to compare this to brown skin girl. That's not the same thing. First of all, brown skin girl is made to uplift those with darker skin tones because we never the fuck are and also Beyonce who is a light skinned woman a light skinned woman understanding her privilege took her privilege and uplifted those who are normally put below her that's what you do when you have privilege that's what you do when you have privilege Danny Lee the song is fucking trash we don't want to hear nothing about no about no yellow bones and most importantly girl you are not black 
okay? And I understand that ethnicity and race, it confuses like 90% of y'all. Y'all don't understand how it happened. Everybody's like, oh, well, first y'all, first y'all all want to say that Dominicans is black, but now all of a sudden Dominicans ain't. No, I'm going to tell y'all what the issue is with a lot of people when they talk about Dominicans. What people are talking about, there are a lot of Dominicans that are clearly black, and want to say that they are not. That is what people are talking about when they are talking about when people have the conversation about Dominicans and their, you know, and their connection to being black. That there are Dominicans that are my color and darker, darker than me, and will still say that they don't have no type of African blood in them. That's what we're talking about. But do you do know that you can be Dominican and you can be a white Dominican? This this is the easiest way to explain it to y'all. You ever fill out a job application and you know it says like white Latina or non-white Latina or white Hispanic, non-white Hispanic. That's why because that that is a thing. Danny Lee in particular, she might be Dominican, but she is a white Dominican. Now, first of all, I didn't even know how light skinned Dan Danny Lee was until I seen the video that they have posted up of her like on a lure or whatever, and it was like with no makeup. That is a straight white woman. If you see her parents, that is a they are white. And when I when we mean white, we don't mean white in the sense of American white. We mean in the sense of that is their race. That is their race. They are white hispanics and that's okay but if you're gonna be a white hispanic you can't go around calling yourself a yellow bone yellow bone red bones that is for light skinned black women if y'all need a if y'all need a um an example gina from martin if you ever pay attention they always call her yellow bone red bone red bone because gina aka tisha campbell is a black woman she is just a light-skinned black woman so she would be considered a yellow bone she would be considered a red bone that's what she would be considered you danny lee you could have just stuck with what you said you a dominican mommy like that's what you are so you could just stick with that um, your apology was complete trash. You use the, well, I have a chocolate boyfriend and black friend, so how could I? You sound like a white racist. Don't really have time for that. It's very annoying. And more than anything, people were upset because outside of you talking about a yellow bone when you're not black, you really did, pro in my opinion, I believe it too. You made this song as a shot to the baby's baby mama, okay, who is a darker skinned like you know a black woman or whatever pretty much and you said yellow bone well i made that song because that's what my man wants and that's what he has bitch yeah that's that that's what he wants now but prior to you clearly that's what he wanted he has children with that woman that woman so i'm a little bit a little bit confused woman little little bit confused but again i agree when a lot of people are saying this is what happens when you when as black people we just kind of let who the fuck ever in because this is the type of shit that goes on nobody's understanding you're 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 and the thing is about Danny Lee in particular Danny Lee you're specifically making your career off of black people music but then you want to tell us that we're sensitive you don't make pop music you don't make the the most poppy song that she made is easy and easy is still to me more heavy heavier on the R&B side than it is the pop side Dominica Mommy is on a drill fucking beat even this song right here this that's a trap beat so you are leaning into black culture for your career but at the same time you want to tell us you want to tell black people though that that we're too sensitive and finally on the last point if y'all don't even believe that the girl is really white look at the damn um 23 and me ancestry um results that she posted she is mostly it don't say in there 95 percent bitch it don't even say 50 percent of anything from africa it don't it say i think she was like a part of hers from spain another part is somewhere else in europe you're not black that's just the end of that conversation i don't want to talk about it no more that bitch she, the whole situation is annoying what we got next next we got the fake tory story now i'm not going to talk about this too long because when i i'm not one like i really 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 get upset when it comes to this whole situation so i have just for the most part avoided it because it's so frustrating like i don't know why but i feel like i'm, I'm I, a lot of times it's like it personally offends me the way that people are handling this situation and it it takes me to a level of like my emotions be like all the way up here about it and i just can't take it so i've had to remove myself from the situation but 
there was a story that came out. I woke up. This is what happened, y'all. I woke up and I got on Twitter. And the first thing that's trending, and this was super, this was like early in the morning, right? And the first thing that's trending is Tory. And the little caption is like, oh, Tory Lanez, you know, the charges against Tory Lanez has been dropped. Now, at first, I'm like, well, that's disappointing. Now, that didn't make me think, oh, it didn't happen. I was just like, oh, okay, well, I wonder why, like, that's unfortunate. I wonder what the issue is. Now, if y'all, like, I did put on Facebook because I looked at this up a couple months, like, a couple weeks ago to see when his trial was. And on Facebook, I lied to you not. I wish I could um, take a screenshot, but I don't feel like editing this video. But I said a couple weeks ago, I said, it's funny. Or maybe I put it on Twitter. I said, I was like, I just realized that the inauguration in Tory's, um, Tory Lane's court date is all on the same day. They were both on January 20th. And I was like, oh, Twitter's going to be in a frenzy. But when inauguration day came, I didn't hear anything about his case. So I didn't really pay it attention or anything like that. But anyway, when I went on Twitter and I clicked on it, you know, the first maybe two or three tweets was people like making fun of Meg. But after like the third tweet, it was something coming out from somebody saying like, I think DJ Academics had put something out saying like that Meg said that like, that's not true. Like, you know, and Tory reps are saying that that's, I don't know if Tory reps, but somebody pretty much reps came out and said that that's not true. The charges weren't dropped. His case was just moved, you know, to another date. Now you have rep reputable I'm talking about reputable ass sources and companies coming out running this story. And I don't remember not one of them coming back and retracting their story. I think I just heard on the read Crystal say that like Complex had came back and said that that wasn't true. But there was so many of y'all on there that was just so fucking happy. This is, like I said, this is my main thing with the whole situation. Why are y'all niggas so excited? For another nigga that y'all never met in y'all fucking life. And about him getting off for some shit like this. But at the same time, it doesn't surprise me because I know how many men, let's talk about black men. I know how many black men actually put their hands on females. A lot of y'all. A lot of y'all. That's why, and, and the more I think about it, it's really not that surprising because a lot of y'all, even if y'all don't put y'all hands on on a female, y'all friend do, y'all uncle do, y'all father do, all the men, a lot of the men in y'all lives put their hands on women, point blank period, and that's why a lot of y'all are sitting there and want to fucking back this nigga to fuck up, because y'all have seen that shit, and y'all are okay with it, or y'all trying to make it seem like it's okay for y'all motherfuckers to do it, and it's not, at the end of the fucking day, there should be no reason why this story is as split as it is. I don't give a fuck. The point of the matter is that Meg was hurt. And it seems like nobody is trying to acknowledge the fact that she was hurt. People are even on the internet saying that she's lying about being hurt. Which to me, that point right there, like... Just, like y'all just want to dick ride Tori for people to say that there nothing actually happened to her y'all dick riding Tori when Tori out his own mouth even said that she was actually hurt she was hurt she was hurt but see this this, this is why I'm getting upset this is why I can't talk about this because it'll piss me off like it'll take me to another level point of the matter is my prayers go out to Meg and to Meg only I believe Meg when she said that Tori is a psychopath I absolutely believe that I absolutely believe that and like I made a video before I feel like Tori if Tori Lanez is playing semantics and he thinks that and he thinks well it's not even that he thinks that a lot of us are stupid a lot of y'all are stupid a lot of y'all are stupid and a lot of y'all swear up and down like i keep saying that y'all went to medical school y'all swear up and down that y'all went to law school when at the end of the fucking day if y'all don't even understand meg couldn't drop the charges if she wanted to she's not the one pressing charges LA is the one person charges. The, the the area that he was in, that city is person charges against him. And like it has been said a thousand and ten times, if you think that in the neighborhood that they were in, that some shit like that is gonna go down and these white people ain't about to find justice and get this little nigga the fuck up out of here, y'all got another thing coming. Y'all got another fucking thing coming. I cannot wait till this case is over with. I hope that they send that nigga to jail. I hope they deport. And I know a lot of people are like, oh, y'all are getting on my nerves saying that they need to deport him. The reason why people, or at least the reason why I feel like, I think he should be in jail and deported. But the main reason I feel like he should be deported is because when everything does open back up here in the United States, I don't want that nigga to be able to make money in he over here. That's why I want him to be deported. Because the majority of the money that Tory Lanez make, I guarantee you, comes from the United States. So guess what? When touring and shit like that open back up, guess what? Keep your ass over there in Canada and take your ass overseas. But don't come to these United States of fucking America. Damn sure don't take your ass to fucking Houston, Texas and try to motherfucking have a, um, a show. Don't do it. You're not about to make money out here. You ain't making money out here. 
here, not on the, not on our fucking dime. Take your ass the fuck back to Canada. Take your ass over fucking seas to make your money. But I'd be damned if you going to hurt. I, uh, whatever. I can't talk about this no more because I'm, I'm, I'm going to go to the next level. Let's go to the next one because I'm, I'm getting pissed off. Chad Wheeler beating his girlfriend. Alrighty. So, and I'm going to put allegedly in there, even though I think he admitted it, but I still want to say allegedly because I don't, I don't, I don't know. But anyway, so there was a story that came out yesterday about um what well, was starting to pick up more steam chad wheeler plays for the seattle seahawks okay and it came pictures of his girlfriend now let's just put it out there chad wheeler is white his girlfriend is black i think her name is Aaliyah. um pictures came out of Aaliyah. her face um you know he had pretty much beat the brakes off of this woman um just a mess end up going to jail getting out on four hundred thousand dollar bond now let's just state the obvious before i go any further right dead ass wrong probably deserves to be in jail shouldn't have got a bond at all um i want to i hope and i pray that there is a like um protection of order um put in place you know I, a lot of times in, in domestic violence cases there is like automatically a lot of times that's the first thing that happens but i hope that that's put in place for her i hope that that woman gets the help that she needs as far as like trauma um as far as of course physically but i hope that she really gets um the mental help that she needs, you know, to actually get through a situation like this. I really do. I hope that for her. Um, and as far as he's concerned, um, he's not probably nine times out of ten, he's not gonna be on the uh on the Seattle Seahawks no more. He's done. I think no, I actually think he is done because I think his um his contract was about to be up in need the fuck way, y'all. Hold on one second, because my phone's about to die. Hold on. Sorry about that, y'all. Sorry, my video had that. I thought I had a pause, but whatever. We'll just keep going. So anyway. So, yeah, so I don't think he's going to be back with the Seattle Seahawks um, at all. I think he was coming up towards the end of his contract anyway. Um, you know, he came out, did a series of tweets, and pretty much said that, you know, he has bipolar disorder and, you know, how he had an episode and he's just so sorry and everything. All right, I'm going to tell you all this right now. My boyfriend, he has bipolar. Now, when he has, like, I guess you would quote, quote unquote, call an episode or whatever, which is, you know, kind of like when you slip like that. Um, like I have put in somebody else's comments. I've been with him for a long time. We've been together 10 years at this point. We have both. He has learned on his own and I have learned as well how to help him. And he's learned how to help himself as far as when he does go into those episodes, how to cope and pretty much how to like bring it down a little bit you know what i'm saying so my whole thing is with this whole thing with this whole situation is i'm not saying that his bipolar didn't have anything to do with it but what i am saying is that as a grown-ass man because he's 27 years old and i'm going to be 27 this year as a grown-ass man i'm pretty sure he's probably dealt with bipolar probably maybe not his whole life but you've probably dealt with it for a while so at this point in your life especially you being an nfl player i mean i know you have money you should have been putting the money and all of that into the resources to make sure that you have that under control. You should have been putting money towards taking your medication if you need to take medication, going to see a therapist or a mental health person if you needed to do that, finding different ways for you to cope with it. But that's the thing. I'm pretty sure you fucking didn't. And because of that, that's why I don't have any sympathy or anything like that for it. Now, I know a lot of black people online are saying, and, and rightfully so, I understand people be like, you know what, I'm going to just say I have a mental health order, um, you know, mental health disorder. And I understand why people feel like that because in the media, okay, first of all, when this story, people were pretty much pissed that this story wasn't as big, you know, as a lot of the other stories, you know, like when an NFL player has put their hands on a white, specifically black players, the story wasn't as big or whatever and then when it did come out you know for him saying that he has mental health issues that does happen a lot that when you know a white person does something one of the first things that the news media want to come out and say is oh my gosh he had a mental health disorder oh my gosh this is that and a third but when it comes to us when we do something wrong or if somebody in our community that does something wrong they're never given the benefit of the doubt of oh well maybe they have a depression maybe they have a bipolar, uh, bipolar disorder maybe they're schizophrenic they never get that it's always well they went to jail back in 1947 because they looked at a white woman the wrong way or they went to jail in 1865 because they refused to listen to their master and pick the cotton like that's what white people do to us so i understand that sentiment i get it 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 and 
I do agree to a degree that when it comes to white players, the media does. Yeah, they, they like to underplay and they like to, you know, undervalue and underplay a lot of the shit that happens. However, comma, this is where I'm at. Okay, now, like I said, a lot of people were upset because, you know, he wasn't given the same amount of vitriol as, like, Princess Ray Rice was. But here's the thing, how I feel about that. Number one, Chad Wheeler compared to a Ray Rice. Let's talk about nor like notoriety. Prior to the whole situation where Ray Rice putting his hands on his wife, I've heard of Ray Rice before. He was all, I, he, I, and I don't even fucking watch football. I don't give a fuck about football. But I've definitely heard of Ray Rice prior to that situation. I've heard about him. I know I've heard about how good of a football player he was. He was somebody's name that I've heard constantly. Prior to this, I never heard Chad Wheeler's name a day in my life. Not once. Not fucking once. So one of the reasons why I personally feel like this story wasn't as big is because he doesn't have that big of a fucking name. He's not a uh, a Ray Rice. He's not a um, a Tom Brady or something like that. He's not any of those. So that's why I feel like, number one, the story wasn't picked up as much. Number two, I do want people to remember that I think, was it in the Ray Rice situation? Was it in the Ray Rice case? I think it might have been in the Ray Rice case where allegedly there was a lot of talk about the nfl at the time trying to hide the story because if y'all remember i want y'all to go back and remember after everything had came out there was a story that came out saying that the police had gave the nfl the tape of what happened like i want to say maybe a month or a couple of weeks before everything had actually came out you know publicly and that at that time, the NFL had the tape and they really didn't do shit with it. And later on, when, you know, when all of that came out about finding out that the NFL had it, I think like the commissioner, whoever came out and said, oh, well, I actually never seen that video before and started doing all of this denying. So I feel like there's a couple of things that come into play with this Chad Wheeler thing. First of all, he's not that well known. Second of all, he is a white man. And thirdly, I'm pretty fucking sure nine times out of ten, allegedly, 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 the NFL allegedly was trying to cover that up because I'm, I'm positive to you. I'm, first of all, as we all know, the NFL has a long sort of history of their players putting their hands on their wives. There's probably so many other cases that we have no idea about, both black and and white of men putting their hands on their wives whooping their wives asses doing all of this crazy ass shit this dog is gonna piss me off snow if you don't sit the fuck down somewhere go to sleep take a nap go to sleep because you're gonna make me mad today it's like dealing with the child y'all i'm telling you it's like dealing with a child so yeah, so the NFL already has a long sort of history of that. So I'm pretty sure Chad Wheeler, like Ray Rice, is probably one of the few that actually, when I mean slip through the crack in the sense of people finding out. But I guarantee fucking tell you, he's not the first, second, third, fourth, twentieth, a hundred and tenth player that has been found out by the NFL who has been arrested for putting their hands on their wife. The NFL does a fucking terrible, terrible, terrible fucking job when it comes to dealing with situations like that because they want to protect their investment at the end of the day. They want to protect, protect their investment. They want to protect their brand at the end of the day. That's how this shit goes. And specifically, I feel like with the Seattle Seahawks, with Russell Wilson being the quarterback and him making as much money as he is and the image that Russell Wilson, um, um, uh, Russell Wilson has, I personally feel like the Seahawks probably didn't want to get that out because they probably didn't want to fuck up the reputation okay there they have this front they have this black man on the front quarterback make all this money and russell wilson no he is like damn near a perfect fucking spokesman okay he's a clean cut nigga he's clean cut across the board so to probably have something like this attached to their brand is probably something that they don't want now i'm not trying to make excuses i'm just telling y'all that's probably nine times out of ten what happened so it should help get that man the fuck out of here get him though and get every other man that feels like it's okay to do this get them all the fuck out of here get them all the fuck out of here so i'm not trying to take away what anybody else is saying um but i also do want to say this you know because this happens a lot like when a white person does something bad and you know oh well y'all didn't do this i do agree with the whole thing about kaepernick that part i stand with y'all on so kaepernick don't got a job right he don't got a job for kneeling, even though these white people done ran up and did insurrection in his fucking capital, he don't got a job. But this man, and I'm pretty sure how many other other fucking people was putting their hands on their wives, they're perfectly fine to stay in the NFL. I got y'all. I see y'all. I feel y'all.
we here. But like I said, I also want to say about this whole thing, um, I want people to understand that, yes, although the treatment of the way that, you know, when a black person, black person does something wrong, they get, like, vilified more for it than a white person does, I still want y'all to remember that it's still wrong. Although Ray Rice did get his ass dragged through more than Chad Wheeler does, I want y'all to remember this. He deserves. Please don't let, please, I want y'all to not, I don't want y'all to make it, I want y'all to remember even if we go to the whole thing with Bill Cosby and all of that other stuff, and Harvey Weinstein and R. Kelly and stuff like that. Although R. Kelly was dragged through the mud more than his next white counterpart, he still fucking deserved. And that's what y'all need to understand. Regardless of how the other white person was treated, he still deserves because he's still trifling. Same thing with Ray Rice. He might have been dragged through the um, mud more, but guess what? He still fucking deserves because he was wrong. And as a black man in this country, you should fucking know better. You should know damn well that if your ass get caught with something, that you are going to be dragged through the race more so that's your dumb ass for not even fucking taking that into consideration on top of you not keeping your hands to yourself you should already be aware of how these white people are going to do you so guess who i feel bad for nobody i don't feel bad for Ray rice i don't feel bad for r kelly i don't feel bad for bill cosby i don't feel bad for any of these black men who have purposefully harmed 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 people in the black community or harmed a woman harmed multiple women specifically in our community and then still expect somebody to go up to bat for them fuck that shit fuck you fuck your mama fuck where you come from that's how i feel about it next topic the verses okay so i did originally do a video where, where are we at y'all my time i originally did do a video um where i did like the whole ashanti and keisha cole Versus, like, I literally did a back and forth for y'all um, of every song, but due to copyright, I couldn't keep it up. So, let's see if I can just quickly run through the songs. Well, first of all, Keisha, 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 don't come on here with attitude, bitch. You was the one that was late. So what if you was looking like Teddy Riley? You should have sat your ass on that screen, or you could have at least sat on, came to the screen and be like, hey, look, y'all, I'm here. I'm just trying to make sure that everything works correctly. I'm just trying to make sure that it works correctly. And you could have popped your ass right back off. You made us wait an hour and a half. Then we'll come on and have an attitude with us. Now, understandably, Ashanti should have kept her ass at home talking about some, oh, I got COVID from hugging somebody. No, you got COVID because you was bouncing around Africa, left the right where your ass should have been home quarantining. So I understand Keisha Cole's frustration, but at the same time, girl, be a professional. That's why Beyonce gets paid the big bucks, because even when her hair gets stuck in the fan, guess what? She's going to keep singing, and she's going to keep performing, because guess what? She's a professional. Shout out to Ashanti, because she held us down. So let's go through. Round one. Keisha Cole, I changed my mind, versus Happy. Happy wins that for me, because Happy is one of my favorite songs by Shanti of all time. Round two, I should have cheated versus the way, and I'm only going to do the rounds of songs that I know, because I got to I gotta keep this video moving. Keisha Cole, I should have cheated versus Shanti, The Way I Love You. I should have cheated because I've never liked The Way I Love You. It took me a long time to even like that song. The piano, I know I'm not doing it right, but you know what I mean. The piano for The Way I Love You is cute. Nice. Um, Not doing that round, don't care. Keisha Cole, Shoulda Let You Go versus Rock With You All Baby. Ashanti, Rock With You Win. But let me tell you something. Shoulda Let You Go. So see, if Rock With You is right here, Shoulda Let You Go is right underneath here. Because that is my shit. Shoulda Let You Go. Go, go. But Rock With You is like, it's top tier classic. Ashanti wins that. Um, I remember versus Southside. Now, this is why, to me, this is not a fair... Mm, it's not fair because, like I said before, Keisha and Ashanti, they both hit at different, like, they didn't come out at the same time. So, for me, it's kind of hard to compare because, see, Ashanti is my childhood bops. Murder, Inc. was my entire childhood. Like, literally, when I was a child, Murder, Inc. ran my entire childhood. But Keisha Cole didn't come out until I was, like, in middle school and high school. So, I remember it's top tier. But because of Southside is, like, such a nostalgic thing for me, I have to pick Southside. I got to. Although I love, I remember, Southside, it just hits me different, okay? Then we got Last Night versus Ain't It Funny. Last Night will always fucking win. Last Night, oh, last night, you didn't even get an answer. You didn't even get an answer. Tried to call, call your baby phone, let me die. Oh, don't tell me, tell me, tell me, baby, 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 baby. Yes, Keisha. Sing, Keisha. This song, 
this one right here love well no actually not this one love versus rain on me rain on me wins for me personally because rain on me is top that's top five that though that's top three that's top three favorite Ashanti songs of all time. Although I love love and it is like a staple for Keisha, it's not a song that I personally listen to a lot. I don't, I personally don't listen to that song a lot. I will listen to Rain On Me way more. This one right here, Trust and Believe versus Down For You. Now here's the thing. Now off of looking, right, I will automatically pick Trust and Believe. However, in the battle, when that beat for down for you start started playing, nope, I it wins. It just hits it. It hits hit different, hit different, hit different, hit different. It wins. I'm sorry. I don't wanna be with you. I wanna be healthy. Can you trust me? The me when you put it on me. I be done with you. Yes, bitch. This I'm gonna stop here at this round because I don't wanna keep going. But here's the thing. This is the one that was tied for me. Keisha Cole, Heaven Sent, Heaven Sent versus Baby. I refuse to choose. I refuse to fuck. I refuse to choose because those are both top tier songs from them bitches. Heaven Sent literally feels like you're ascending to heaven. And ba baby, I can't see no one here on God's green earth. You don't know what you've done to me. I never thought I'd need you desperately. It's kind of sick how I'm stuck with you. I don't care cause I'm needing you And how I feel will remain the same Cause you're my baby Listen, don't be no words Come on, Sean Sean Come on, but to me overall I don't really even remember who won I think if I'm just going off of the verses as a whole I felt like a Sean T won But if I'm pretty sure if I really break it down Keisha will win, but not by a lot I'm talking about probably by like one It was damn near it was a good battle because it was it was neck for neck. So that was the verses. Y'all tell me how y'all think about that. I did see that the NFL did the verses. I looked for I looked at the first night like yesterday. It it wasn't interesting to me, but that's fine. It's interesting for somebody. And then finally, let's talk about the Biden administration and all of the backlash that they're getting for all of the shit that they're doing. First of all, I want to say this, and I am not at all caping for Biden. He wouldn't have been my first pick, but this is what I want y'all to understand. Yesterday, that man was in office for, for for exactly one week. It's been a week since this man has been in office. And a lot of people are expecting the entire world to fucking flip and do a 180 in a week. And it's absolutely ridiculous to me. Now, of course, there are things. I'm not saying that he's doing everything wrong. But I want to touch on how many things is it? I want, to, I want to touch on a few things. First of all, let's talk about the minimum wage. Now, when he was running, they did run on um, part of their, you know, platform was running on raising the minimum wage to, I believe, $15. Now, they came out and they said that they are going to raise the minimum wage to $15, but it's going to be over the process of the next five years. And everybody who did not pay attention in macro and micro uh, economics and those who never even went to the class had a whole heart attack. Everybody who never went to their economics class or went and didn't pay attention had an issue with this. Do you want to know why I don't have issue with this? Because it what it's what makes fucking sense. Let's be real with y'all. And this is how I have to break it down to somebody. If if first of all, if it was to if today on Thursday the minimum wage was seven twenty five and tomorrow the minimum wage is fifteen dollars, first of all, almost twenty five to fifty percent of y'all are going to lose your job. People are getting fired off top. There are people that will be fired. Companies are cutting across the board. They're cutting across the board. Secondly, everything else is going to go up. Your rent's going to go up. The cost of food is going to go up. The cost of gas, everything across the board is going to go up in prices. And I'm going to give you the, this is the easy example that I can give you. This is how I broke it down for somebody. Milk, okay? So let's say that tomorrow everything went up to fifteen dollars. So let's talk about milk, okay? Let's say right now milk is maybe like two fifty, three fifty. The reason why that will go up is because you want to know why? Okay. The tools and stuff like that. Okay, let's just say the farmer, right? Let the farmer do whatever it is that he do. Let him milk left and right, okay? Let's just say let let's leave him as a fixed. Let's leave him as a constant, right? And let's say that nothing goes wrong there. Here's where it gets funny. The man who comes and picks up the milk from the uh from the from the farmer, guess what? He gotta get paid more, right? He gotta get paid more. Okay, so he gotta get paid more, right? 
then the person who gets the who the person who gets the milk like the person who like is like from the grocery store who gets the milk from the person who picked it up guess what they get paid more too and then guess what the person that comes and and fills this um you know stocks everything they get paid more too so guess what everything across the board see how everybody's getting paid more guess what everything else has to go up to pretty much pay for everybody else getting paid more that's how it fucking goes around here and nobody felt and i'm not even i'm terrible at economics but I, i i at least know that basic fucking principle this is how this country works i cannot speak on how other country work but in this country and this this is what i think most people don't understand Y'all are expecting minimum wage to go up and nothing else to go up. That's not the reality. That's not how this country works. If you are getting paid more, then guess what? You're going to have to pay more, period. That's how this works. Nobody in this country is going to get more money and other companies are not going to expect you to give more money. That's not how this shit goes. And like I said, like I said before, I understand. I I agree that the billion dollar companies like McDonald's and Walmart and Target, they probably really can't because Target actually already pays everybody $15 an hour. But the rest of these huge companies, they can absolutely afford to give people $15 an hour. Absolutely. But what about the small business owner? What about the small business owner that right now who's paying minimum wage can barely afford to keep the employees they have on now what about your local pizza shop what about your local corner store those people cannot afford today to to, to give people tomorrow making 15 dollars an hour that's not how it works i'm pretty sure it's 2025 because you have to give the economy time to adjust to the pricing but nobody paid attention to economics class as far as i'm concerned that's what i learned um as far as the checks is concerned I don't understand why a lot of people are expecting to get the checks next week. I already knew when people was on the phone, because I'm like, I think out of all my friends that I'm probably the one that kind of pays attention to politics the most. So a lot of times people will come, they'll be like, are we going to get that check? And like, I've had four people call me and ask me, when are we getting this check? I said nine times out of ten, not until the end of February going into March, because I don't understand, not for them, but I'm talking about for the people who are getting upset. Have y'all not been paying attention? It took them nine fucking months to do one damn, to give us a second fucking check. It takes time nothing happens overnight just because he's in office that doesn't mean that he can just automatically send it out it still has to go through the house it still has to go through the senate it still has to go through these processes before it's approved you he don't just walk in on wednesday and then you get your check on thursday or friday it doesn't work like that it just does not work like that i need everybody to understand that but i'm not and i'm not saying that that throughout this administration, he's not going to do anything wrong. But I'm just saying, I feel like right now, the men been in office all of a week, and a lot of y'all, I don't know if it's because we're in a microwave ever, y'all, y'all expect the instant gratification. That's not how that shit works. That's not how this shit works. I know that's how y'all want it to work. I know that's how y'all think it should work, but that's not how it works. Maybe that's what the last administration did. They did whatever the fuck they wanted to do, and that's why people are Democrats ass, because they feel like y'all should just do whatever it is y'all want to do, but that's not how the fuck it works. The only thing else I want to say is, that he did do that was good is that i seen he signed an executive order saying that like there should be like there's no longer going to be any more private like government contracts with private jails that is a step that is a that is a first step in the right direction of undoing the harm that he did you know with the 94 crime bill and a whole lot of other shit that he had to do so that's the first step the first step in the right direction but that's all i got y'all for today y'all get in the comments tell me what y'all think come on